Sometimes while you wander the wasteland, a Protectron approaches you and hands you a flyer advertising a store called Watts Consumer Electronics. This adds the location as a marker to your Pip-Boy map. Now Watts Consumer Electronics is really close to a military checkpoint. Just follow the roadways and you'll stumble upon it. This military checkpoint is particularly rich in ammunition. I managed to find four fusion cores and a bunch of really rare ammunition, and there's even a suit of power armor in a locked cage. In my game, even at level 49, I only found a T-45 suit on this frame. But who knows, maybe you can get an X-01. Now, anyone familiar with the Fallout universe will recognize Watts Electronics as the makers of many electronic goods from previous games, including the Watts 1000 laser pistol, the 2000 laser rifle, the inventors of the holodisc, Geiger counters, fission batteries, cattle prods, electronic locks, and a bunch of other stuff. But this is the first time that we actually find a storefront for the company in the game. They probably created their own storefront to sell the products that they manufacture to compete with shops like Hester's Consumer Robotics. We find that store in the Commonwealth as well, and they sell robots manufactured by other companies like Robco, but that's a video for another day. Watts Electronics probably wanted to make more money by selling the products to consumers directly instead of just through another store. Before entering the building, you find a trailer outside. Inside the trailer is a terminal, and the memos on the terminal give us a little bit more insight into what was going on at this particular store. The name of the manager was Mr. Felix, and the loading dock supervisor was named Ralph Cady. This terminal tells us a little bit more about the kinds of objects that Watts Electronics sold from their shop. They sold holodisc recording machines, blank and rewritable holodiscs, spare parts for robots, including replacement power and replacement optical lenses for the Mr. Handy robots, and vacuum tubes for the Protectron. They also sold more conventional items like radios and televisions. But it looks like there was some shady underhanded business going on here. One of the memos from Mr. Felix to Ralph talks about a shipment coming in on the night of October 10th, 2077. He asks that this shipment be kept off the books and to use as few dock workers as possible to get the job done. He doesn't tell Ralph what the shipment is and says, Remember, Watts rewards employees that demonstrate they can be team players. Sounds almost vaguely threatening. Inside the building, we find that the first floor has caved in on itself. You can easily jump down to the second floor and use the makeshift ramp that has formed from the crumbling main floor rubble. But let's explore the main floor first. On the main floor, we find four or five robots. They're not active, but they're not destroyed either. You can't loot them. They're simply deactivated. You see a number of pedestals which were used to show off the robots that Watts Consumer Electronics sold. It looks like in addition to selling their own things like holotapes, laser rifles, and batteries, they also sold robots manufactured by Robco. This building has a surprising number of bathrooms. There are two bathrooms side by side on the main floor, and then if you go through the far door against the wall, you find what appears to be maybe an employee restroom or an employee break room, or maybe a waiting area for customers while the staff gets their robots together. And inside this room, there's yet another bathroom. So there are three bathrooms on this main floor. Walking up the main steps, we find the manager's office, and inside here, we find the assistant manager robot. It looks like one of the Mr. Handy robots was programmed to be an assistant manager for this location. In the manager's terminal, we learn a little bit more about that secret shipment. We find a cryptic note from Malcolm that says, The shipment is procured and on its way. Leave your payment at the drop-off site in the amount that we discussed. These are some high-grade robotics I'm getting for you. So we know that the shipment that Felix was getting was robotics. And we know that it was under the table. For some reason, Felix didn't want anyone knowing about this. But why? Well, we don't know that yet. Now, I spent too long, far longer than I'd like to admit, trying to look for the payment drop-off site that Malcolm mentions in this terminal. I even talked with viewers on my Discord server and asked them if they knew where to go, and they didn't know either. My best guess is that the stash talked about in this terminal entry is found in the plumber's secret. A little ways away from the Watts Consumer Electronics is an unlisted location called Plumber's Secret. This is a small warehouse consisting 
consisting of two rooms connected via a doorway through a wall in the middle and each with an upstairs loft area. The rooms are unremarkable and I'm slightly disappointed that there are too few Super Mario references in a building called Plumber's Secret. In fact, there are no Super Mario references, which is a bit of a bummer. You can find a bit of scrap and some cams, but what's interesting is that if you go to the loft area in one of the rooms, you see some plungers sticking to a wall. The trail of plungers goes up the wall and then across the ceiling and stops at some loose boards that are concealing a stash area. If you shoot the boards out, two things fall to the ground. One is a stash of caps and the other is a syringer rifle. Now I have very low luck and when I looted the caps I only got 15 caps. It's highly unlikely that Felix is going to be paying for a huge under the table shipment of robots with 15 caps. There's also a syringer rifle, and I have no idea what Malcolm would want a syringer rifle for. So I don't know if this is the cache that is referenced in the terminal, but it's the closest secret cache that I could find near Watts Electronics. It's also quite possible that it's just not in the game. I mean, if we were to find a location like this in real life, and if we were reading a terminal entry that was 200 years old, it's very unlikely that we would find any cache, or that if we did, anything would be left in it. So that that's my best guess at to where the cache is. I'll leave the final conclusion up to you. Many thanks to viewer Brooklands on Discord who pointed me to Plumber's Secret. The other entry on this terminal in the manager's office looks like a command that controls all of the different robots. It says, disable military protocols. But if you click on it, you simply get a note that says, I quit, Cooper. Suck on it, Felix. It looks like his terminal has been hacked, and I think we can understand a little bit more about this secret shipment. It's unlikely that a bunch of consumer-destined domestic robots would have a bunch of military protocols installed on them. My guess is that Felix managed to purchase a shipment of robots that were destined for the military, that already had military programs installed on them. My guess is that he found somebody that worked with robots for the military and arranged for that person to steal a bunch of military robots that he could buy for far cheaper than he could buy from Robco and then sell from his shop. This would help keep the Watts Electronics storefront competitive with Hester's Consumer Robotics. Since Watts Electronics doesn't manufacture robots themselves, they're gonna save a whole lot of money buying these robots in an underhanded fashion from some rogue agent at the military rather than buying them at full price from Robco. It looks like in order to get these robots ready to sell to consumers, he needed to wipe the military protocols on them, and Felix assumed his employee Cooper would take care of it, but it looks like something went wrong because in this terminal entry, Cooper quits. There's another staircase that leads up to a storage area, a caged storage area. You have to get through an expert lock to open the caged area, but if you do, you're rewarded with a mini nuke and a broken safe filled with pre-war money. Pre-war money is a great source of of cloth for your settlement building and you can sell it for a decent amount of caps. It's also possible that this cash we find in the safe is the cash that Felix was supposed to give to Malcolm, but he just never got around to it before the bombs dropped. Back down the stairs and rounding the corner, we find a stairway that leads down into the storage area where the collapsed main floor has formed a ramp. There's nothing much of interest in this area. We find a bunch of crates, cargo containers, and a loading bay. You see the red door that leads outside where the forklift was and where that trailer was that had the loading dock terminal in it. But go Going left through the door, we find a deactivated Protectron and a terminal. The terminal allows you to open the door that leads to the server room. The most notable thing in this server room is a copy of Total Hack issue number one lying on the table next to the terminal. This magazine is really easy to miss because it's the same color as some of the junk paper and junk paper decals that you can't interact with in the game. So it's really easy to miss, but you shouldn't miss it because this magazine comes with a holotape called the Protectron Override Program. This holotape allows you to hack into Protectrons and issue them new commands, including to attack your enemies, make them peaceful, and even to follow you. I will be getting into the Protectron Override Program into greater depth in a different video, probably tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. Now the terminal in this room gives us the complete story. This server room was Cooper's office. 
In the terminal, we find that the servers are offline and there's a note from management. In that note, Mr. Felix says, Cooper, I don't understand what's so hard about this. I just want you to turn off the military protocols on the shipment of robots we got last night so that we can put them into demo mode. And that is what was so important about this. All of the Robco robots have a demo mode. Now the typical demo mode is for the robot to say, hello, mum, and to offer you a cup of coffee, or to offer to clean your room or something like that. But because these were purchased in an underhanded scheme from the military, the demo mode is set to military protocols, which means that they're going to become aggressive. You can't sell a robot in your storefront if as soon as you turn on demo mode, the robot wanders around shooting everybody. But it looks like before the bombs dropped, Cooper never agreed to turn off military protocols and Felix was never able to find somebody to do it for him. The third option on this terminal is to activate the demo mode and we know what's gonna happen now. Since the demo mode has been turned into military protocols and that hasn't been deactivated yet, if you choose this option, all of the robots that are currently deactivated in Watts Consumer Electronics will turn hostile. If you just want to walk away with all the loot that you've gotten to date without a fight, then don't turn these on. But if you want to get as much experience as you can, go ahead and turn on the demo mode and go through the facility and wipe out every single robot that comes to kill you. This is, after all, part of the fun of the game. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the full story of the Watts Consumer Electronics storefront and Watts Electronics, the company. It has been long referred to in the entire Fallout franchise, but this is the first time we actually have a physical location for the company. What did you think of Watts Consumer Electronics? And do you guys have a better theory for where we can find the stash that is referenced in Felix's terminal? The one in Plumber's Secret is my best bet, but I'd love to hear your opinions. Are there other companies in the Fallout universe that you'd love me to do a video about? Let me know in the comments below. I read all of your comments and I use your comments as inspiration for my future videos. And if I can take a moment of your time really quick, I would love it if you guys would unsubscribe from my channel, then resubscribe and click the little bell icon to get notifications when I publish a new video. Only do this if you believe that I deserve your subscription. YouTube has made many changes to the way YouTube works recently, and I wanna make sure that those of you who have subscribed, stay subscribed and get notified when I produce a new video. I'd hate for any of you who want my videos to miss out. If you'd like to join the Oxhorn community on Discord, check out the invitation link that I've included in the description of this video. And if you like what I do and you wanna support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Patreon subscribers gain access to my private Discord server, as well as a bunch of other cool Oxhorn perks. But as always, more than anything, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just so glad that you're here watching this video today. Thank you for watching from the bottom of my heart, and I'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning with a brand new video.